I just want to go around this car and then I'll position on the other side. Just the reason why is because he's going to want to come past me anyways. So we'll get a better spot. We'll go around. <laughs> oh, everyone's so funny. Kirst said, who's directing, she said that she's glad I saw the elephant. Oh, you guys are so funny. You're so good for my ego. <laughs> Keep me in check. <laughs> What would I do without my loving family here at Wild Earth? So, who have we got upon us today? We've got a bachelor group, a very small bachelor group of elephants. This is a young boy. He's an interesting looking fella, don't you think? Darby, he looks like he's, his growth has been stunted slightly. He doesn't quite look like he's in proportion. He looks very sort of stocky. He's, and his head looks quite big, but he, he doesn't really look in proportion. Looks like he's got very short legs. Now, he's, I don't think he's a dwarfed elephant. Dwarfism is not particularly common in wild animals, as you can imagine. I, I have yet to hear, oh my goodness, Davi, look at that elephant pushing against the Balanites tree. He's trying to shake the fruit loose. So dwarfism is not particularly common. I, I still have, haven't have heard of many cases. I haven't seen it. Uh, I did read about a case, though, I think it was in India, of an elephant. But the, it, this elephant didn't have any natural predators in the particular park that it was in. You can actually research it if you'd like. I've forgotten what his name is. He did have a name. And he was a funny-looking elephant. He reminded me of this feather that was that we, we had a look at just a minute ago. And the reason why dwarfism in the wild is not particularly common as you can imagine everything about you is is a disadvantage and if there's any predators around they're going to take you first because you look different and you look like you have a a bit of a weakness so uh, you know it just doesn't it doesn't last out here i haven't really heard of it in africa young boy are you Doing a bit of displacement behavior, or are you actually eating? No, he's actually eating. That's so typical of an elephant bull to do something along these lines where they pretend that they're feeding and they get closer and closer to the cars. However, he is actually eating the grass. He's loving it, in fact. And leaving that little bit to dangle. Probably going to spit that out. I can't imagine eating those ends would be too tasty. And he's also got a bit of a big bit of mud. Yes, I know what you're doing. Look, he's got his ears open. Hello, big boy. This could be my first encounter with an elephant bull here in the mar. I'm just going to sit up because I want to watch him. Relax. It's okay. You can carry on eating. Don't m mind us. We're just, it's, this is a live safari show. Perhaps you haven't heard about us. We work for a company called Wild Earth and the show is called Safari Live and now you're a famous elephant. And people are taking lots of screenshots of you and we're saying nice things about you. So don't panic. I think he's going to be okay. I think he just wanted us to know that he knew we were here, which I mean, maybe he heard about my eye condition. I thought he just better renounce himself. That's rude. You must be friends with Cursed. There's those houses again that you can see just at the back. That's just the staff accommodation. I'll just quickly reiterate that with the Olololo gates. We're not far away. I'm a little bit disappointed actually about our lions, but at least our elephants are behaving today. And we've been saying how we haven't been really having close encounters with them. Well, th I think that's as close as you're going to get in the Mara. He came right up to the car. He was only a couple of meters away. He's not stopping really either. He's not letting anything get in his way and eating that grass. And he's going for a specific grass tree. I, can't, I don't know what one it is. I have no idea what it is. I'll have to pluck a piece and identify it when I get home. It's not the herringbone grass that's growing here, it's something else. I probably do know it and I'm just not certain. You're probably all laughing at me going, ha ha Taylor, it's such an easy one. I can't see it properly. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Okay, I'm really going to stop now. But though, if you listen, if you've got any good jokes, please share them. Hashtag Safari Live. Like, I'm, I'm all for a laugh. You, you can all make fun of me, it's fine. I don't mind. <laughs> Now, Romit, you're wondering, how good is an elephant's hearing in terms of difference? I think pretty spectacular. I do think they pick up the infrasounds better through their feet, though, sort of long, long uh, distance communication. So up to about 20 kilometers or so, they can pick those vibrations up in their feet. Hearing wise, I'm, I'm not sure of an exact distance. So we can, okay, let's talk about lions. We can hear a lion roar and it can travel about eight kilometers. I reckon an elephant could obviously hear that if we can hear that, most certainly. So I think, I mean, an elephant could be, 
you know, maybe 20 or 30 kilometers away and probably hear a lion's roar. I think it also depends on the sound, how deep it is, how high pitched it is. Uh, it's it's often easier to hear um, sort of a, a deeper call. It seems to travel a little bit further than the higher pitched sounds. And I wonder if it's the same with elephants. As we as humans get older, it becomes a bit difficult to hear those high pitched noises. I wonder if that's the same case for animals. Be quite interesting to find out how anybody would test that. I don't know because they can't do. I don't know if any of you have ever done that test uh, where they play uh, different pitches. And you obviously go, okay, I, I can't hear it anymore. I hear nothing. You're not playing anything. I've done that to my parents before where I just started off and I said I was playing a sound and I wasn't. <laughs> I'm so mean. It was very funny. They were convinced and my dad was panicking. Oh, I'm, I'm not a naughty child, hey? But yes, man. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure any exact sort of distance that an elephant could hear from. Also, how would you how would you test that unless you had two different people? Say if elef no, even if elephants were communicating again, you wouldn't know. You might not be able to hear it because of the infrasounds. So you'd have to have a distress call of an animal somewhere of another elephant. Say a, a, a trumpet, that horrible sound uh, that you hear not too often, thankfully, uh, and see if an elephant were to respond and turn. And then measure it that way. Otherwise, I'm not also not an elephant researcher, so I don't know how they test these things or if they have ever tested something along those lines. But there's just three of these boys, actually four. There's one a little bit further away, and I'm, I'm sure that they just follow each other around. They're all learning from one another. There's no massive bulls here. I think the oldest bull mm, mm, might be that fella on the far right. He's got quite big. T I'm just looking at him. He looks a little bit taller than the rest. Now, Riti, you're wondering if an elephant by itself. Oh, listen. Can you hear that? That. Something so. Maybe you didn't hear it, but that elephant that we're talking about um, actually gave off a bit of a rumble. I want to see what happens after he's done that, and then I'll get back to that question. It's just interesting to see when an animal, when an elephant makes a noise, and typically it's the matriarchs within breeding herds that decide as to where they're going to go. When they make a call, you can almost see instantly a change within the, the herd's behavior, whether it's they start moving in a way, you know, they stop what they're doing. I didn't notice anything particular except the fact that they all turned and faced the same way. So I don't know what he said to them. But, um, sorry, Riti, your question was, would an elephant on its own be, um, so I suppose, vulnerable to be being prey? Not an elephant of this size. These are big boys. I mean, they're not, they're not fully grown just yet. They're in there probably between 20 and 25, 26, 27 years old, you know, early to late 20s. Is, you know, there's a couple of, well, the one at the back looks quite small. Even though he's got longer tusks, tusks he doesn't look as tall and a, a robust as the others. So, and that other fellow that we first saw, he was particularly small, but I'm confused by him. He he was just very little. He looked strange, very out of proportion. Um, so, no. But a young elephant, you know, maybe a, one that's got left behind, a teenager, most certainly, to a big enough pride of lions. Obviously, one lion is not going to take on an elephant uh, that weighs two tons. Uh, it'll be very impressive if a lion could do something like that. But that's not the case, of course. I'm just going to check with my binoculars because I see something, but I don't know what I see. Where are you? I'm going to try and find them now. <laughs> Let me just have a quick look. I think, I don't know, am I over-focusing? What is that? No, that's a log. I spotted a log in the distance. Right. Okay, we're going to move on now from our elephants and we're going to